are going to go ahead and get started. Although I'm checking over at tech to make sure that we're okay. I'm, I'm aware we're working on getting the captioning. There's apparently a misunderstanding about the Zoom link. So we're working on getting that to them. But I'm going to go ahead and start with some announcements. If you, Ron, if you, okay, I think we're getting it taken care of. Okay, welcome to our final day of the business meeting, everyone. Um, I'm going to say that we are in order. It's a time. I trust the secretary knows what it was. 10.05. Great. Um, my clock went away. Um, so a few announcements. Um, first of all, um, update on our non-emergency holographic secretary. Alex is doing okay. They're not any worse. I don't know to what degree they're any better, but... They're hanging in there. They are being taken care of by friends. So um, I just know that some folks are wanting an update on that. So COVID sucks, y'all. Um, let's see. Uh, today's coffee and tea service is provided by, wait, which Kevin? Stanley. Stanley. Okay, Kevin Stanley and Cliff Dunn. So thank you for that. Um, I know there's been some confusion over the video. Um, so the official live stream um, actually is, I believe, now available for replay on the member portal. Um, we, were all re we were always planning on having the recordings and then uploading them later. I was unclear that there was another option of replaying it on the portal. Um, and so didn't request that thing, but I believe that thing is now available as well as we will still have the recordings for available upload. So I know there's been some concern there. Um, I think those are most of my opening announcements. Um, I'm going to, so we're going to jump into uh, the results of some of the, the committee on investigation and then also who I appointed to the F13 committee. Um, first, I'm gonna recognize John Pomeranz for a motion. Uh, mixed chairperson, I ask unanimous consent that upon final adjournment, this meeting be adjourned in memory of Deb Geisler. Okay. I'm going to take that as unanimous consent of the body, and we will do so, and you all will yell at me if I forget. Um, I'm also going to ask unanimous consent of the body to, in the um, committees that have already been formed this year, as well as any more committees that we might form, um, as well as any standing committees. I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to, in the instructions that those committees have, add encouragement that they be restrained in the number of motions that they submit to Seattle. <laughs> Is there any objection? Okay, hearing none, we will make sure to pass that along to the committees. Um, Speaking of committees for the Hugo Award Study Committee and the Business Meeting Committee, please email your interest in those to business meeting at by 5 p.m. BST on Friday. So that's the end of this week. We will pass your interest along to the chairs of those committees and we will acknowledge your email and receipt. We have received many emails about those in the last couple days. And no, you haven't received a reply yet because we're in the middle of everything else, but we will be replying to those and forwarding your information along to the chairs. Okay. So, whoop, sorry, I'm hitting things. Okay, so we're gonna now turn to the results of the Committee on Investigation election. Um, so Warren Buff was elected first, and so we'll function as the chairperson of that committee until and unless the committee decides to elect its own officers. And then Chris Barkley, Todd Dashoff, Chris Garcia, Vera Mendelson, Randall Shepard, and Nicholas White are the remaining members of that committee. So those are the results of the Committee on Investigation. <laughs> I am going to ask the body um, if there is any objection to thanking the tellers 
and ordering this just mm, and the tellers are I have a list uh, Sharon Svartsky, Jill Eastlake, Jack Foy, and Alana Vincent, who spent like four hours counting y'all yesterday. Thank you so much to them. Um, and so unanimous consent to thank the tellers. And once Sharon has completed compiling the final report for the minutes, after she's finished, finished that destruction of the ballots, is there any objection? Hearing none, they are so thanked and ordered. Okay, moving to the F13 committee or location, location, location. I've appointed Tammy Coxon as chairperson and the other members of that committee will be Don Eastlake, Anne-Marie Rudolph, Olaf Rockney, Ingvar Matson, Kevin Black, Alan Fleming, and one member from an affected country to be appointed later. I have received one person who I believe qualifies who has expressed interest. Um, I, anybody else who may be from an effective country, the same deadline of 5 p.m. BST on Friday to business meeting at glasgow2024.org to express interest and consent to appointment to that committee. And then I will choose who that person will be and that information will be entered into the minutes. Okay. I'm gonna ask the consent of the body to have the first thing that we take up to be, take up today to be F18, cleaning up the art categories because one of the proposers needs to go strike the art show. Is there any objection? Hearing none, F18, I am recommending a debate time of, excuse me, of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate is set at six minutes. Terry? Oh, it's on page 54. Thank you. Terry Ash, she, her. Um, I mean, you can read the discussion points in the agenda, but the current state of the professional artist and fan artist categories currently uh, relegates most artists who sell their work to fan artists because the only people who qualify as professional artists are people who have been recognized by various book and magazine publishers and are on their covers or in their pages. Um, and this is not the state of science fiction and fantasy art today. Look at any convention art show. You have people who, this is their job, this is their livelihood. They are professional artists and they deserve to be recognized in that category. And to that end, we have worked to amend the Constitution such that anyone who sells their art is considered professional. We have also worked to ensure that you can be nominated in both categories in a given year should you produce both work that qualifies as professional and work that is donated to the fan community and thus qualifies as fan. The problem is that this is really a, an award referring to a portfolio of work in a given year, but we call it best artist. Uh, think of it as more of best novel, not best author. Okay, and I will note that it looks like our captions are active, so yay. That was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? See none, or do you wish to speak against? I don't know what it is. I have a question. Where are the other teams? Okay, that would be debate. If you, please come to, no, the member needs to come to a microphone this sounds like it will be a speech against, so I'm recognizing you for a speech against, and you can give your speech at the microphone. I will remind the body that just because debate can be formed in, can be stated as a question, does not make it a question. It is still, in that case, debate. Thank you. Uh, Joni Brill Dashoff asked the board member, still. <laughs> My serious question is, if 
everyone who's earning money from sales is in the same pot. Are we seriously putting someone like Bob Eggleton up against Sarah Felix, or maybe I should put it the other way? Thank you. That was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kate Secor, she, her. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I think I'm too short, too tall for this mic and too short for that one. <laughs> oh, there we go, okay. Um, Mixed Chair, while I understand that there are many fine artists who have been qualifying for many years under the current system, I think that it is time that we acknowledge that there is more to professional art than book and magazine covers. There's 3D art, there's multimedia art, there's digital art, there's so much art, and we need to start taking those people seriously. We can't just say, oh, well, you're just a fan because you don't get on a book cover. We need to take ourselves and the state of the market more seriously than we do right now. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Those are set very deliberately. No, don't. Yeah, let's, let's please not mess with the tech. Okay. I'm going to recognize in the black. Andrew Adams, he, him. Mr. Chairperson, this is a thorny issue, and I applaud the proposal of the motion for trying to fix this, which we ha we've been dealing, trying to deal with this for many years. Unfortunately, I still don't think you've got it quite right. There are too many fan artists I know who make some proceeds from the sale of their fan art after, for example, it's published in a pr uh, convention publication, which they don't make a profit. They barely cover their costs, if that. It just defrays some of those costs of being a fan artist. And so I'm sorry, I cannot support this particular version of this proposal. I encourage the, the makers to consider those edge cases a bit more and try and get something we can live with. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there... Okay, that's not a privileged motion. Um, you can rise on either side to make that. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Um, Ingvar, or person in the brown? Gonna, I, no, I'm not gonna get this right by the end. I'm gonna keep trying though. Ingvar Madsen, he, him. As was stated in the introduction of the amendment, or the proposed amendment, a person, uh, we are, this is not a category for a person, this is a category for a body of work. A person who produces both paid for art and not paid for art, the body of work that, is nomin that, that has been paid for goes under professional, the body of work that has not been paid for goes under fan, and a person can be nominated for both in the same year. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm gonna recognize in the stripes. I will remind the body that if you are not able to stand and be recognized, that's fine, but please get a speaking card from the floor manager, including if you are the floor manager, <laughs> to assist me in recognizing you. Is this one? There we go, Todd Dashoff. Uh, most of what Andrew said covers my point, but just to make it a little clearer, I believe the motion as it's currently proposed says offered for sale. So you could offer something for sale every day of the year. If you never sell anything, are you a professional artist? Related to that, if I get a, I don't have a dog, but say I did. If I get a dog to walk across a canvas with paint on his paws and put it up for sale, Quote, unquote, that's professional artwork. Okay, that was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm going to, in the brown, in the back. And I will once again, does the floor manager have extra speaking cards available? Did you, do you know where they went? Okay. It is very difficult for me to see just a hand being raised. It is much more helpful if there's a colored piece of paper. Uh, next chairperson, Rafe Richards, he, him. Referring to an earlier speaker, 
perhaps this does not get it exactly right. It is closer to right than what we currently have. We've been trying to get it exactly right for as long as I've been coming to business meetings, and that's not very long compared to some people here, but it's still quite a while. We cannot continue to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Ten seconds. We should get better. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, um, at the front. Uh, John Pomeranz, he, him. Uh, I speak reluctantly against because I agree uh, with the previous speaker. I think this is something that needs fixing and I applaud the makers for doing so. Uh, and furthermore, I feel somewhat at sea because I've not been part of all of the previous debate on this. But I am concerned merely reading this now that they are not limiting the nominated works in either category to works that have anything to do with our genre. Um, and furthermore, that the phrase body of work is perhaps too broad since it might include a series of novels or short stories or uh, con running or something else. Uh, and I appreciate that what they're trying to accomplish is more than two dimensional visual art. And I think that is laudable, but I am, I, I would like to be told that I am wrong and switch to supporting this, but at this time I cannot. Okay, that was a speech against, and did time and favors elapse? Okay, I'm gonna say when there's less than 10 seconds remaining, that's time being elapsed, unless I hear an objection. Okay, so you're wanting to make just a, non, a non-privileged motion? Okay. No, and that's fair, and that is a reason why I shouldn't just consider 10 seconds as being elapsed. So I'm going to take that as an objection, not consider it, and ask if there's anybody wishing to speak in favor. And I will recognize in the purple at the back. Yep, that's in order. Uh, move to amend to add the words... Um, to make the first sentence read, one or more collaborators on a body of work, a, a body of artwork, in the field of science fiction or fantasy. Second. Second. In the second section, would also uh, say that for any place body of work appears, it would be on a body of artwork in the field of science fiction or fantasy. Okay. So the um, motion to amend it's been moved and seconded. This would. Once again, people in the front, I need you to, if you're going to talk, do it at a volume that I can't hear you. Um, for both instances, somebody tell me if there's more than two. Hearing none, it's both instances of work, of body of work, strike work, and insert artwork in the field of science fiction and fantasy, so that in both instances it would read, one or more collaborators on a body of artwork in the field of science fiction and fantasy. And or. Or. or, okay, thank you. I heard about 10 different prepositions and my brain was not hearing the conjunction or instead. Okay, one or more collaborators on a body of artwork in the field of science fiction or fantasy. When I write SFF in my notes, apparently I just think of it as and. Um, first displayed, et cetera. Okay. What is our total time remaining? 41 seconds. Okay, so there will be 20 seconds on each side of the amendment. Does the member wish to speak in favor? No. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment passes. So the item now before us is F18 as amended, changing body of work to body of artwork in the field of science fiction or fantasy. I believe we are still looking for a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Aye. You've already spoken on the motion, even if it was on the other side. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Or er, nope. Okay, everybody sit down. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Still nine seconds. 
Cliff Dunn. A previous speaker asked if somebody who w was trying to sell their art and, and was not successful was professional. Yes, they're just not very good at it. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? In the blue. Jill Eastlake, mixed chair person. Uh, I make tote bags. If they happen to have uh, pictures of spaceships on them and I charge $40 for it and I put it in an art show, that makes me a professional artist? Yes. Yes. This just the doesn't seconds. make sense to me. That was a speech against. The member in the order in the back is out of order. The entire body is out of order for choosing to have like participatory debate. <laughs> okay, how much time is elapsed, or how much time is remaining? Like Two and five. Okay, time for debate has elapsed. So we are going to move to a vote. Okay, all those in favor of F eighteen as amended, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, and the motion passes. <laughs> Apologies to the those in favor for how long you had to keep their arms up. I thought it was going to be closer. Um, okay, having dealt with F-18, we are now going to move back to F-10. So previously on the business meeting, for those that do not remember, we divided F-10 into several different sections. And the piece that is still with us is F10A, which is the new section 1.9.1, well, 1.9 rather, and the 4615, I believe. Yes. Okay, so it's, so looking in the agenda, it's on the first page, and then all the way to Article 2 on the second page. And then at the very end, that last paragraph there. So it's everything related to the software committee. Okay? So that is F10A, and that is what is before us. Okay. For F10A, I'm going to recommend a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, I'm sorry, was that an objection? Okay, hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back, one of the proposers of the motion. Randall Shepard, he, him, mixed chairperson. I've got an amendment that I would like to propose. To, oh, it's on there? Yes. I, it chunks all the clunky stuff from the original motion, but settles into requiring open source software. We should have never had once private software that nobody could examine, let alone four times, let alone last year. So I think open source software covers the transparency that's needed as part of the Hugo process. Others should be able to look at it and determine how functional it is. And I, Chris Rose drafted that language. I'm very much in favor of it. I think it cuts straight and simple. It doesn't really place any undue burden on a convention. They're allowed to pick the open source software they want. Okay, the parliamentarian is working to split this into two slides so that the font can be bigger. So the motion by substitution has been moved, and I think I heard a second. Okay, good. We've heard a second. Great. That was a speech in favor. So the total of four minutes of debate time is going to be split between the two sides of the amendment to start with. 
Is there anyone wishing to speak? You know what, I'm gonna give you all a little bit of time first to read it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time to read it. So this amendment by substitution would add two new sections. So for everyone's edification, 3.7 is the nomination section of the Hugo article in the Constitution. And so this would add this new 374 to the nomination section. And then 311 is the voting section of the Hugo article. And so this would be a new subpoint in section 311 that it would add. Yes. Mr. Chair, I would like a ruling on whether or not this amendment can be considered to be germane to the original amendment, given that it both does a different thing and alters a different section of the Constitution. This would seem to be substituting a completely new piece of business for the other piece of business, because it does something so completely different. Okay, the point of order is well taken. First of all, I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to treat this as an amendment to the to F10A anyways. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the rules are suspended to allow this as amendment by substitution to F10A. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yes. F10A has been amended by, well, what is before us is an amendment by substitution to F10A, which is now looking at adding sections to 37 and 311. So the original sections as listed in your agenda are not part of the amendment by substitution and so are not what we are looking at right now. We are looking at the new text in the substitution. Thank you. It is on the screen. It has not been printed because of time. Okay. Harry and Lurie, she, her. While I appreciate having open source software as a requirement, that doesn't solve all of the problems. First of all, this only applies to the Hugo software and not to the site selection software. And second, just because something is open source doesn't mean it's good. And, without, and, and not every Worldcon may have the same level of technical expertise to determine what is good, and therefore having a software advisory committee might still be a good idea. Okay, that was a speech against the amendment by substitution. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back. Uh, Chris Rose, he, him, uh, the author of the amendment in question. Uh, I, without getting into the merits of the of the amendment itself, uh, but just by substitution, I think that this addresses the narrower set of things that the business meeting can reasonably be expected to mandate about how a, a Worldcon operates. It's the Hugos and the things that we hand on to them. And so I want the narrower amendment that gives us the best we can out of what is reasonable to ask. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay, in the gray. Jack Foy, he, him. Uh, mixed chairperson, I, uh, I, I support the gist of this amendment. Uh, my concern is just that the limitation to custom software uh, might open a door for bringing in commercial packages uh, if, we, if it was claimed to be off the shelf. Okay, that was a speech against. How much time remains on each side? 
Uh, we have one minute and nine seconds remaining for and 55 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in? Yes, state your question. Kevin Snadley, he him, parliamentary inquiry. Mixed chairperson, should this amendment by substitution fail, would it be in order, since we would be back at the original wording that's in, in the printed document, to add that same wording that is up before us as the amendment by substitution as an addition to the proposal to create the so open source software committee? Would it be in order to do so at that time? So for those not familiar, there are rules in our parliamentary authority about not rehashing things over and over, essentially. However, substituting the text to completely swap it is a different thing than adding the text in addition to what we have. So I think I would rule that to be in order. Would that, would that happen? Okay, I had, what, I had asked for a speech in favor, right? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the front. Or, I'm sorry, at the side. I do, a like, thank you all for not yelling look to the left at me like you did at Jared, but sometimes I do need a reminder that there's somebody in the corner over there. My apologies. Ron Oaks, he, him. I have... Like Chris, I have also written Hugo Award soft counting software, and my software will be open source by the end of the month. I fully support this. I do not support the idea of a committee, at least not as written. It is not the purview of the uh, business meeting, and I fear severely that people who are not competent to be specifying or worse, creating software will be elected to said committee and will create a horrible, horrible mess that will not be useful software because we will have too many cooks in the kitchen instead of one or two people who understand Ten software. Seconds. So please approve this amendment. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, at the front. Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and I have been on Hugo administration subcommittees multiple times. Uh, it is very difficult to find software that is reasonably expected to be correct. I hate to say provably correct, that doesn't work. Um, and also suitable for the Hugo administrator to actually understand and use. We've had multiple times where software was delivered and turned out during the counting processes to be ineffective, incomplete, or un un understandable, poorly documented. I can go through the whole litany of things that go wrong with software, and you can't stop in the middle of counting to go back to the open source process and, 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 and get it fixed. So I urge us not to do, require this uh, because the administrators need more leeway. Okay. Time for debate on the amendment has elapsed. Yes, you may offer an amendment. That would be in order. Will not be debatable. Thank you. Perry and Lurishi, her, can we get to the second part? That's. No, yes, yes. I, I move to strike the words for the Hugo Awards from this part. Okay, so I've heard the amendment. I am going to say you can strike for the Hugo Awards from it, but it is still going to be in Article 3 uh. about and 3.11 about voting for the Hugo Awards. So instead of that, can we put it in the section for the voting for the site selection and just... So you are wanting to... Hold on. I will remind the body that whether or not they like the idea of the, men, the amendment um, sounds talking about that would not be relevant. I, I agree, but I'm still going to state what she's trying to do first. 
So you are wanting to add somewhere in Article 4, basically duplicating this text. Right. So probably tallying. Y yes. Okay. Yes. I will rule that that amendment is not germane because this is about the this amendment is about Hugo Award voting software. Um, if somebody wishes to make an amendment to do that, or sorry, a new motion to do that at a later time, you would need to figure out where in Article 4 you were wanting to do that. Okay, I see that multiple people are, are we all rising for privileged motions? Yes, okay. Uh, Andrew Adams, he, him, I wish to appeal the ruling of the chair, I'm sorry for the body for doing this. The original motion was more broadly than just the Hugo um, voting. It was about the software used in both Hugo voting and the site selection. And therefore, as we have allowed this, I believe it is still germane. Okay. The ruling has been appealed. Um, so per our standing rules, there's some amount of time allotted to this. Um, one moment. Or maybe there's not, maybe it's not debatable. Okay, time for debate has expired. Um, so there is not technically time to debate. Um, I get to state my reasoning. I'm gonna do so very briefly. The member has already stated theirs. Does the member wish to elaborate at all once I'm done? Okay, um, so the way an appeal works is that I will get to state my reasoning for it. You already heard the member's reasoning for disagreeing with me. We will then move to a vote. The vote is in the form of do you vote to sustain the ruling of the chair? So a yes vote will be to agree with me and, and call the amendment out of order for not being germane. A no vote will be to disagree with me and to flip, and so then the amendment would be in order and be considered germane. So my reasoning is that regardless of what the original motion was about, the amendment by substitution is only about the Hugo Award voting software and so what is before us is the amendment by substitution, which is just about Hugo voting. The contents of the original motion don't matter. Um, and so also adding site selection into this would not be germane. That's gonna be the extent of my speech. The member has foregone um, adding to their rationale. So I will also forgo my prerogative to say a second thing at the end of debate. That seems unnecessary. Okay. So, as I said, the motion will be in the form of, do you vote to sustain the ruling of the chair? A yes vote is to agree with me, a no vote is to disagree with me. Okay, all those in favor, and this requires a majority vote. All those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, raise the hand, thank you. All those against, thank you. And the chair's ruling is sustained and the amendment is not considered to be germane. Time for debate on the motion or on the amendment by substitution has elapsed. And so we will move to a vote. For what purposes the member raised? Okay, come to the microphone. Yes. Because the, yes, well, okay. Yes, they are second order amendments, but per our rules, when the first order amendment is an amendment by substitution, second order amendments are allowed. Christina Forsyth, she, her. Could we strike the word custom so this amendment applies to off the shelf software as well? Okay, so the motion is to strike the word custom. Is there a second? Hearing none, there is no second and so the amendment is not before us. Okay, time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member raise the card? Okay, bring the mic to the member, please. I wish to amend by adding the following after the words Hugo Awards. Site selection or any other polling conducted by the Worldcon Committee. I'm going to rule that that is not germane because we cannot add things about s how to run site selection into the article about how to run the Hugo Awards. Okay. For what purpose does the member rise? Call the okay. Call the question on what? 
on only the pending matter. Okay. The question has been called on the pending matter, which is the amendment by substitution. Is there anyone still wishing to speak for any purpose? Okay. Scene one, we will move to a vote on calling the question, which requires a two thirds vote. Calling the question ends the debate and also ends the making of any subsidiary motions like further amendments. Yes. We already voted on the appeal. We handled that. The, the decision of the chair was sustained. Okay, so the question has been called. All those in favor of ending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, thank you. The motion passes and the debate is ended and we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution to F10A, which is on the screen. It is in two slides. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution, please raise the hand. Okay. We are voting on whether or not the amendment by substitution will become the thing that is then before us. So this is not final adoption or pre-final adoption or whatever you want to call it when we still got to send it to Seattle. This is purely on whether or not we want to take the text of the amendment by substitution and have that be the text before us. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed. Thank you. The motion passes, and so what before us, what is before us is now F10A as amended, which is the text on the screen. We have not had substantive debate on F10A. However, since we have had substantive debate on the amendment by substitution, which is now what is before us, I'm going to rule that we have had substantive debate on F10A unless somebody objects. Is there any objection? State your inquiry at the microphone. Alexis Layton, he, him. Is it in order now to move to amend by adding in this, this similar clause about site selection? N no, it, it, it is the same text. It was not germane before, and so it is not germane now, unless the member wishes to suspend the rules. I mean, I would move to appeal because the original motion included information, included Please speak in, I know you, you're addressing me, but I need you to speak into the microphone. The original motion covered site selection. Right, I understand that. However, the original motion, it's like it never existed at this point. What is before us is the text that we voted to substitute with, which does not relate to site selection. And so adding in an amendment related to site selection would not be germane. I understand that the member disagrees with me. Does the member wish to suspend the rules or appeal the ruling of the chair? Otherwise, we'll need to ask the member to sit down. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask some questions. What purpose? I think I have an amendment. Okay. And right. What is your purpose for rising? Okay. The secretary is trying to figure out some tech stuff. I will once again remind the body that we are we have an emergency holographic secretary who did not bring tech like they are going to need to be taking notes. And so we appreciate your grace for dealing with tech that isn't hers. We're good. Okay. I'm going to recognize in the green at the front. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I think possibly we have a possible way to get to what I think a bunch of people are trying to do. Next chair, I move to amend, which is this? This set, the one that's above us, to move it from an amendment in uh, Section 3, or uh, Article 3, to move the whole thing to Article S or 6, Constitution, which has the general provisions about voting everywhere, and to general, so it would probably to add it somewhere in Section 6, I'd leave it to the Secretary where, probably 6-4, after round 6-4, and to generalize the wording to take out the actual uh, the, the reference to the Hugo Award so it would apply to all the elections that we administer if we use custom software that it be open source. This would in effect apply to the Hugo Award and site selection as it's not likely we would need it for the elections to the Mark Protection Committee. Okay. 
So I'm moving so to generalize this wording and move it to, sec to ar sec Article 6, and that is my motion. And then one second. Second. Okay, I hear the second. And I've given the speech in favor of it. So here's what I'm going to say. You're asking the secretary to do a lot. So I'm going to ask the body, is there any objection? We are at 1049. Is there any objection to going ahead and taking our bio break now so that the member can create actual wording for us to put on the screen when we return from our bio break? Hearing none, or is that an objection? Okay, so I mean, technically this isn't a suspension of the rules, it's just You wish to move to refer to committee? Okay. I'm going to hear that motion. The amendment was seconded, so what's before us is the amendment that isn't in text form yet, and now we have a motion to refer. I'd like to, ref uh, Tammy Coxon, she, her, I'd like to refer this to committee. Uh, the consequences of open source software in the context of site selection are very different than in the context of Hugo administration. Uh, where we have a, in the Hugo administration, we... So this is a speech, oh, okay. and time for debate yep. has elapsed. I'm going to ask you, okay. A, to what committee, and B, to report back when? To a committee to be created by the chair. Okay. Um, and uh, to report back by Seattle, because we don't have any more time in this uh, meeting to do Okay. It. So the motion is to refer to a chair appointed, a chair, refer to a committee appointed by me, the chair, to report back to Seattle. Is there a second? Okay, time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay. Okay, so the question is what's being referred? So everything, when we refer an amendment to committee, it also refers the underlying matter. Okay, so the motion is to refer the amendment to F10A as amended, and therefore also F10A as amended to committee appointed by me to report back to Seattle. There's been a second. Time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member rise? To move to amend, to move to amend the referral to committee that is in order. Please state your amendment. Next chair, I move to only refer the Stanley amendment to the committee. I that is not in order. That's not how it works. Okay. Um, Time for debate has elapsed. The item before us is the motion to refer the amendment and the underlying matter to committee to be appointed by me to report to Seattle. Are we ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor of referral, raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. Okay, I'm going to say that the no's have it. So what is before us is the amendment from Mr. Stanley. I'm going to say that it is 1052. We are going to be in recess until 1102, at which time the maker of the motion will have text as well as where they want to put the text for the body to see. We are in recess for 10 minutes.
This is your two minute warning, two minutes.
Okay, it's been five minutes since I gave you your two minute warning, so we're gonna get back in order. I need to ask all conversations to cease and all members to take their seats. Good job on the conversations, but please take your seats. Okay. So the item before us is the amendment from Kevin Stanley, which was seconded, which is on the screen. So this would move the second portion of the of what is now F10A to section 6.4 of the Constitution, where it says 6.4, that should also be underlined in blue because we moved it, and strike the words, the Hugo Awards, and insert any matter under this constitution so that it reads all custom software dot 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 uh, for any matter under this constitution must be licensed etc that has been moved and seconded is there any objection to extending debate time by one minute on each side hearing none debate time is extended and i'm going to recognize the person in the front for a motion Linda Robinette, she, her, mixed chairperson. I move to reconsider the referral to the committee I had previously voted against. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to reconsider the referral to committee. We have extended debate time by one minute on each side. So is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the reconsideration, which can go into the merits of the underlying matter? The underlying matter is the referral. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I thoroughly acknowledge that this is potentially much more complicated than we thought, and I think it would be a good idea now to go ahead and send this off to a committee and make and think about what we're doing and make sure we accomplish it in the correct way. Thank you. That is a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the reconsideration? Okay, in the back. The, the item before us is the reconsideration. Debate on the reconsideration can go into the underlying matter, which is the referral. So if you have feelings against referring, that would be in order for you to speak against. Do you wish to do so? Okay. Okay, that is in order as part of the, as part of speaking against the reconsideration. Bill Rowe, um, member here, also member of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, I don't see anything in this amendment uh, that overly complicates the matter, and I don't believe that um, uh, we need to postpone at this time uh, what is a very straightforward question, uh, and having already consulted um, a few people here, uh, I believe that uh, we are ready to vote on the matter and not take up any more of this committee's time, or the member's time. Okay, that was a speech against the reconsideration. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yes. Uh, Mix Chair, just to clarify, when we get to a vote, we are voting on whether we should vote again about the refer to committee, right? Correct. Thank you. One would presume that if the reconsideration passes, the referral might, but who knows what would happen? <laughs> okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Up at the front. Mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. If you think the question of it going to the Hugos needs to go to committee, let that go to committee or let uh, Mr. Stanley, uh, or sorry, my, the other member, uh, put something together on their own. But I think the underlying question is already pretty clean and straightforward, and it's only gotten complicated since the Hugos got dragged in. That was a speech against reconsideration. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? One moment.
One moment. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, I'm gonna recognize. In the interest, uh, Warren Buff, he, him. In the interest of making sure the body understands how complicated this is and why we must refer it to the committee, the text proposed now reaches the business meeting, site selection, and the Hugos. And the consequences really do need to be studied before we vote on that. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor of reconsideration. How much time do we have remaining? Uh, we have 29 seconds remaining for and 17 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against reconsideration? Okay, in the blue. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. If we think this is too complicated, we should defeat the amendments and just pass the underlying motion. That was a speech against referral or reconsideration and also referral. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Anybody wishing to speak against? Okay, we're gonna move to a vote. For what member does the, well, for what purpose? You wish to speak against? Okay. We have 12 seconds remaining against. This does not require that the Hugo's the business meeting and site selection must use the same software. It's just that they have to, we have to look into other software. Time. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move to a vote. So to be clear, what we are voting on is whether or not we wish to reconsider the vote to refer to committee. This is not whether or not we wish to re refer to committee. It is purely whether we wish to reconsider that vote. It does require a majority. All those in favor of reconsideration, raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. Okay, and re reconsideration uh, passes. Debate time has elapsed. The matter before us is now referral to committee. I think we're doing a serpentine, but we're just gonna see if we flipped a lot of people, just in case, because that would be faster. Um, to be very clear, this is not me saying do or don't vote a certain way. I just, we're gonna see if a count of a hand vote is enough to see what it is before we move to a serpentine, if that's required. All those in favor of referral to a committee Referral of the Stanley Amendment and the underlying matter to a committee to be appointed by me to be to report back to Seattle. Please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the ayes have it, and the motion is... and. The entire matter is referred to a committee. I'm going to appoint a committee chaired by Chris and the other members of it to be picked by Chris. Cool, okay. So the F.10A committee will be chaired by Chris Rose with other members to be appointed by Chris Rose. Okay, we are going to move on to item F11, Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring which is found on page 43 of your agenda. Just so that we're all clear, there was discussion about dividing this question back on Saturday during the first pass, but it was not divided. So what is before us is what's in your agenda. I'm going to recommend a debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Does somebody from the Mark Protection Committee wish to speak in favor? Donald Eastlake, he, him. <clears throat> uh, 
There are a number of proposals for, for sort of radical change, like having the central WISFIS directly administering Hugo or site selection or things like that, but those are sort of difficult and complicated things to do. This is uh, a amendment to the Constitution which would provide for uh, monitoring by representatives of the business meeting of the process of uh, site selection uh, administration and Hugo uh, Award administration and uh, with reports back to the business meeting and the Mark Protection Committee to gain uh, greater insight and to uh, perhaps spot uh, problems earlier. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. I want to be really clear to the body. The faces you just saw me making were entirely about me finding out that apparently I'm spending tomorrow night in Philadelphia, according to American Airlines, and not about the speeches. I try not to make faces. I just want to be very clear it was not about anything that was happening here. We're going to take that up, not during the meeting. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against at the front? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I have been on Hugo administration subcommittees with questions and the kind of things that come up, some of which should be rema remain confidential and not shared with other people uh, because they are potentially embarrassing, including some of the stupid things you know people do. Um, and some of them which come up and, and are gone, you make the decision uh, in the, in the last days before the ballot is published or in the last days before the counting is closed, uh, or even sometimes afterwards when you're trying to figure out who's voting for what. Um, I don't think that you can effectively monitor uh, a Hugo administration subcommittee and retain the delegation uh, of its independence. It is either uh, going to be independent and it's going to make its own decisions, or it's going to be very transparent and frankly everybody's going to be uh, end up being as unhappy as they are now. So I don't see that, that this improves anything. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Um, at the front in the black. Andrew Adams, he, him, next chairperson. The specific duties of the people appointed uh, to do this monitoring are to report on the proprietary of the process uh, uh, propriety of the process that is all they are expected to report on not the nitty-gritty not anything embarrassing unless that embarrassment is an attempt to interfere unduly with the process as we've laid out i support this motion okay that was a speech in favor is there anyone wishing to speak against the front. Okay, T. Corshi, her mixed chair at this time, would it be appropriate to move to refer this to the Hugo Process Study Committee? Or did we try that already and not do it? I believe we, we tried that, and it was determined by the body that since it wasn't determined by me, but y'all voted that because it also dealt with site selection, you didn't want to refer it to that committee. Oh, okay. So that would not be in order as we've already tried to do that. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against at the back? Chris Rose, he, him. Uh, against is probably where I sit on this, but I'm not 100% sure. I guess I would just question whether this oversight committee is intended to follow every email and private communication between the members of the Hugo subcommittee, regardless of what convention they are associated with, including the conventions that might have to deal with the public relations fallout. I am concerned that that is an unacceptable burden to place on the communications of, of the Hugo subcommittee and on the potential observers for it. That was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor at the front? or the front side. Mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, to address the comments of a prior member, I think we are at a point where we, may ha we actually have to trade some independence for some oversight given what happened last year. Um, look, there's always the problem of who watches the watchman. 
we're going to have to figure out just exactly how closely they follow things, but at the very least, decisions like you know potentially kicking works off the ballot for unknown reasons needs to be subject to some sort of oversight and I interrogation, or we end up where we are right now. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to, s or how much time do we have? We have 27 seconds remaining in favor and 30 against. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, in the scarf, yep. We are reacting to something that happened less than a year ago. I think that we should give some time and see if that doesn't happen again, because I do not believe it's going to happen again. That was Elzeb Kovar. Um, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor in the tartan scarfy thing? Sash. Sash, thank you. Look, I don't know words at this point. Mixed chairman, the chairperson, Kevin Hewitt, he, him. I, w I wish that a parliamentary inquiry, is it appropriate at this time to recommend postponing this item indefinitely? No, it would not be in order to postpone indefinitely. Per our rules, that's only in order at the preliminary meeting or the first time that it comes up at a main business meeting, okay. which it already has. Thank you. Okay. I believe I was looking for a speech in favor. Okay, at the front in the blue. Agree, she, her. Yes, we're reacting to what happened last year. We're trying to prevent it from happening ever again. Uh, we're putting two new people on each of the uh, committees, which is not a great burden on the current committee. Where are we on time? We have 18 remaining against, 17-4. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Over on the side, microphone, floor manager. Well, I'm not sure about the whole amendment, but I, I, I specifically, excuse me, I specifically wish to make an amendment. Uh, I Please wish, state your name. Uh, sorry, Lou Walkoff, he, him. State your uh, amendment. To remove all the reference to the Mark Protection Committee. Frankly, I don't see that it's within their purview. In the last paragraph where it says, yeah. these persons shall report to the business meeting and to the Mark Protection Committee? Yeah, that seems to be the only place where it appears, yes. Um, are you also wishing to strike the part at the last sentence that the vacancy can be filled temporarily by the Mark Protection Committee? I don't think that's what you're trying to do. Because somebody needs to fill um, a vacancy. Yes, I believe I am. So you're but wanting- as, as I said, I don't believe that it falls within okay, the Okay, I, I, that's a debate. I need to clarify what the amendment is first. So you are wanting to move to strike in the final paragraph, in the first sentence, the words, and to the Mark Protection Committee, as well as in the final sentence of the last paragraph, strike the words, and until the business meeting so acts, temporarily filled by the Mark Protection Committee. Is that correct? Yes. Is there a second? Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded. We have about 30 seconds of time remaining. Okay, so this will be split 15 seconds on each side. So you will get to speak to it, but it will need to be 15 seconds or less. Once the secretary, I know, once the secretary has caught up. We're gonna have the text on a screen in just a moment. Text on the screen in just a moment.
it's correct. We have the text in the slides, Linda, so can you? Okay. okay. Do you wish to speak to it? You have 15 seconds. This is the equivalent of putting the lawyers in charge of protecting Tony the Tiger for Kellogg uh, on the safety inspections committee uh, and to de and deal with the uh, uh, supply chain air problems that they have. It's not within the purview. Time. Okay. That was a speech in favor. I see lots of people hopping up. Are you wishing to make privileged motions? In which case, you need to wait for me to ask, is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? <laughs> Does anybody have a D20? <laughs> yeah, Don is the maker of the underlying motion, so I'm going to recognize him. Well, one of the makers. Donald, thank you, him. I, I don't see this as putting the Mark Protection Committee or in charge, particularly of anything they aren't already uh, in charge of. Uh, it seems to me that in case there's any need to act between business meetings, that it was useful for the Mark Protection Committee to receive reports. Time. <laughs> Time has elapsed. To be fair, it, I think it was the tech person that cut your mic, not the timekeeper. Um, can the tech person turn the mic on to allow the, the speaker to finish their sentence? And somebody should be able to fill vacancies. Thank you. Okay, time for debate has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. What we are voting on is the amendment to strike in the last paragraph, in the first sentence, the words and to the Mark Protection Committee, so that it would read, these persons shall report to the business meeting as to the propriety, et cetera. And in the last sentence, the striking, and until the business meeting acts, or and until the business meeting so acts to the end, so that it will read, should a vacancy occur in this set of four persons, the remainder of their term may be filled by the business meeting. That is the amendment. Are we clear on what the amendment is? All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, the amendment does not pass. And so we are back to F.11 as proposed. Time for debate has elapsed, and so we will move to a vote. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay. Uh, division of the question, not the House, I'm assuming. Okay. It would be in order to divide if you divide it in a way that I rule as dividable can you please come to the mic we did already try to divide this i believe so you can't try to divide it the way we've already tried to divide it okay i may have misremembered okay i'm going to move to divide the question to separate between the hugo administration monitoring and site selection monitoring i have paragraph notes specifically which paragraphs need to be in which and both I'm happy to provide those to the table or just to recite them off here. Is that in I, order? I think, at first I thought you were trying to divide it the same way, but then you said you had paragraph notes about which need to be in the same in both, and I don't remember that being a thing in the previous division. It was not. So I think it probably would be in order. But my guess, let me see what you have so I can decide if it's intertangled. One moment, we're gonna be at a brief standing pause while we look at this. It was a valiant effort, but I'm ruling that the division is intertangled. The, yeah, the secretary does still need to see what you wanted to do, probably, so that the minutes know what I ruled wasn't allowed. Um, I think 
Well, hold on, hold on. I will say, because I've ruled that it's not allowed and the member doesn't seem to be trying to appeal me, we can get that added to the minutes later because there's not gonna be anything further on it. Okay, so what is before us is F.11 as proposed. Time for debate has elapsed and so we will move to a vote. Yeah, we only, when the text is amended, we have it for the screen. We do not have the full text of the original things in the agenda on the screen because we have the agenda that we printed for you. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay, the question has been called and seconded. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this matter for any purpose? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F.11, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? and F.11 passes and will be forwarded on to Seattle for ratification. Okay. F.12 has already been defeated. F.13 has been referred. And so this brings us to F.14, popular ratification. Yes, what, state your inquiry. It's appropriate allowable to refer one to moment the committee. is the mic on now sorry perry and laurie she her would this be the time to try to refer this to committee it would be once i've set a debate time and we've actually gotten to it okay for f.14 popular ratification i am recommending a debate time of eight minutes is there any objection to eight minutes hearing none debate time is set to eight minutes does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor Okay. Next, uh, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chairperson, I do think I am in getting some karmic payback for comments that I have made before this body and elsewhere. Far back in the mists of time before recorded history, also known as 1993, <laughs> it is, seems to be an article of faith among people who have only just recently discovered that a world con exists or how it is governed, that anything that happened before then, and particularly anything 50 years ago, was basically just two people meeting in their parents' basement. Well, that's not true. And some of you know that. And some of you, not just those who were there, know the history of our organization. We have been known to change our rules on how we vote on things. Back before the 1970s, you had to be in this room at the site selection session to vote on where to choose a site. And you had to be there at the beginning of the meeting where the doors were closed and no one else was admitted while you had to sit through the speeches. And there were people who desperately defended that, people of some renown in our field at the time. I've read the, I've read the discussions. And yet, in the early 70s, we, the business meeting, voted away our own ability, our preciously held vote to be able to control this, to allow all the members to participate, not all at once, not in some mass meeting, but in a way that allowed them to vote by ballot. And the world did not end. And in fact, I would contend that the selection process got much better. I am not in favor of gigantic Inter, uh, Zoom calls of all of our members, but that is beyond the scope of this. I do, however, think that it would be fair to allow all of our members supporting and uh, any WSFUS member of any class who has WSFUS rights to have a voice in the ratification of, docu of, our, of changes to our fundamental governing document. Similarly to how many states, I know not all countries apply this way, we, we, we in those states have to vote on changes to our state's constitutions. The, in most but not all cases, or in many cases, those changes have to come out of the legislature, and many of them do. But the citizens of the state vote. We don't require the citizens of the state to participate in a, a 10,000-person Zoom call. Just all I'm asking here, all this is proposing is that we 
make the ratification stage open to everybody and that we do it by ballot. And the mechanism that is chosen in here is one that already exists for site selection other than you don't have to pay to do it other than to become a member. You don't have to pay the additional money. We know how to administer that and I think we should adopt this and just let go, let it go. The members can choose whether or not to uh, adopt or ratify things. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I will recognize, do you have a privileged matter? Okay, then I will recognize the member in the blue. Is the mic on? Perry and Lurie Sheher, I move to refer this to the Business Meeting Study Committee. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to refer this to the Business Meeting Study Group that was created on Friday or Saturday, uh, chaired by Colin and Farah. Uh, do you wish to speak to it? One of the things that the Business Meeting Study Committee will be looking at, and it makes more sense to have them do it all at once. I will say I'm going to set a debate time of a total of two minutes for this referral to come out of the time remaining on the main matter. Is there any objection to two minutes? Okay, hearing none, debate time for the referral is set to two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak against referral? Also in the blue. I urge this body to defeat this um, so that this um, can be amended to instead of being a popular ratification, um, instead of popular uh, poll um, over pending amendments, which I think would serve the purpose without making har potentially horrible mistakes the body can't fix. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Alan Fleming, he, him, um, uh, Mr. Chairperson, I speak to, uh, in favour of referring this to committee. One of the things that this um, uh, uh, Worldcon has done for the first time is to have an advisory vote on uh, independent films. Uh, it would be very useful for the uh, outcomes of the uh, the process of this to be input into a committee stage so that um, uh, th the information from that can be taken to be applied to many things that would need to be done by popular ratification. We need to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. Committee is the best place to do that. How much time is remaining? Uh, we have 19 seconds remaining for and 43 seconds remaining against. Okay, is there a speech against referral? I'm going to recognize the secretary. Yes, if you could please move to the mic and Warren will take notes. Linda Denaroff, she, her. Um, when this was originally proposed several years ago, I voted against it. But given all the arguments that I've seen on the internet and elsewhere, I think this is a reasonable proposal that we should implement. Thank you. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak? That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, at the back. We have 19 seconds remaining in favor. Elspeth Kovar, she, her. This is long enough that we're going to debate it to death, and I'd kind of like to go home at some point. So why don't we just refer it to the committee who can deal with it quickly? Thank you. Okay, that is a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? How much time is remaining? We have 30 seconds remaining against. Okay. Cliff Dunn, he, him. Either the committee will somehow lose track of this or it will be dealing with this with no input from the body as such. And look, the independent film Hugo was a steaming pile of incoherent 
nonsense, and it got 42% of the vote. Yes, this is not germane. Um, it, uh, make sure I, I, we're asking people, you know, we're asking to go to a, to a vote of the, bo of the people, and that's what the bo vote of the people just did. I'm going to ask for order in the body. I do agree it was an edge case. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that we still have more time. I'm gonna say that that's time elapsed for speeches. Is that against or in favor? I can't even remember. Negative. Well, yeah, but it was against. Okay, how much time is remaining for speeches in favor? Uh, we're out of time for this particular <laughs> debate. We still have some time on right. the Top level. Okay, time for debate on the referral has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. So what is before us is referral of F14 to the business meeting study group that was created earlier that is chaired by Colin and Farah. All those in favor of referral to the business meeting study group, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And the motion passes and it is referred to committee. Thank you. So F14 has been referred. Okay, looking at where we are on time, I'm going to suggest that we take up next F17, editorial alignment. Is there any objection? Okay, you object to taking up editorial alignment next? Okay, are you wanting me to just go to meetings, meetings, or okay? I'm going to, um, is there a motion to suspend the rules to take up editorial alignment instead? So moved, okay, and I've heard multiple, so that was seconded as well. We will move immediately to a vote. All those in favor of taking up editorial alignment next, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And that was two thirds, and so we will move on to editorial alignment, which is F17 on page 54. <clears throat> My apologies, I drank some water that went the wrong way, so that's why this is happening now. <coughs> um, okay, editorial alignment. Uh, I am recommending a debate time of four minutes on this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Or is any, are any of the proposers in the room and wishing to speak to it? Hey, is there anybody else wishing to speak to this? Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F17 editorial alignment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. It was very enthusiastic. wasn't sure if it meant something different. Uh, F17 passes and will be passed on to Seattle. Okay, well, I just gave us less time for meetings everywhere, but I don't know that any of the others are quick. So we're gonna go ahead and spend our 15 minutes before lunch, or half an, hour. half an hour, you're right. Look, I don't remember things at this point. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take up F15 now, which is on page 50. I am recommending a debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to postpone this indefinitely. Debate time is automatically set at four minutes. Um, do you wish to speak to the motion? Okay. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against postponing indefinitely? I recognize the maker of the motion. Kate Secor, she, her. Mixed Chair, one of the things that I've heard over and over and over again is we have to have change. We have to test our changes. Can we not test in production? The major intent of F.15 is to provide a mechanism by which we can test all of our actual changes 
in a meaningful way before we get to the meeting and say, oh, let's just do it completely differently in a way that we've never seen. We're gonna have to have a mechanism to do it somewhere. If we postpone every possible attempt to do that, we're stuck with only making changes live. I don't think that's a good idea. Can we at least talk about it? Okay, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? There's a problem in answering. What is your inquiry? No, this has not been divided. It is the entire item F15 as proposed. If things are divided, I will note that. The member may not speak to it or against it rather. You, yeah. Yes, Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. Um, I think this is the perfect thing to refer to the business meeting study committee and therefore I would be opposed to postponing indefinitely. That was a speech against postponement. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The motion to postpone indefinitely requires a two thirds majority. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, the motion does not pass and it is not postponed. The four minutes doesn't come out of the debate time, by the way. Um, so I had set a debate time of six minutes for this and that's where we're at. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor? Kate Secor, she, her. And it's kind of the speech I just made, right? It is very clear from a lot of the discussions that are happening in the room, out of the room, and online, that changes are coming, right? That we need to think about ways that we can make the meeting more accessible, ways that we can make the meeting have more entry points, have easier entry points, have more time, right? If we had been debating this stuff all year, this meeting would take half an hour. We have no official mechanism to do that. We have no way to do it in a way that counts or that has any kind of regulation or requirement to report back or anything. The intent of this motion is to supply that mechanism, to give us a chance to say, you know what? Sure, here's an agenda. You wanna try Martha's rules? You wanna try all online? You wanna try doing it with carrier pigeons? Great, here's how you do that. Go, have an agenda, ha but have meaningful debate. Have meaningful results. Accomplish something with your time so that the people that do it aren't just playing, right? We need to test our changes. The changes are coming. That's what this is for. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against in the front? Kevin Stanley, he, him. Thank you, Dr. Lurie. I move to uh, refer this motion to the Business Meeting Study Committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer F15 to the Business Meeting Study Group chaired by Colin and Farah. Um, I'm gonna set debate time on the referral to two minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Do you wish to speak to it? Mm. Next chair, I speak in favor of the referral. Uh, I do actually, I, I, I grant much respect to my colleague. Uh, personally, I think our current government system of a mass meeting is the wrong form. I would like an elected council, but in any event, this is not necessarily a bad idea, but I believe the study committee needs to throw this in with the huge amount of other things they're given and try and come up with a somewhat less incoherent set of suggestions. Okay, that was a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, on the side. Cliff Dunn, he, him, this is not against, I, but I do move to amend to add the proviso that Ms. Secor be put on that committee. Okay, so this is an amendment to the referral specifying that Kate Secor be added to the business meeting study group committee. Second. And we have consent, that's great. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'm going to, if there's no objection, we're gonna move straight to a vote. Actually, is there any objection to that instruction? Hearing none, it's been amended. Um, and so what is now before us is still the referral with the additional instruction that Kate Secor be on the committee. Um, I 
believe we're at a speech against referral. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of referral? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F15 to the Hugo Business, or rather, Business Meeting Study Group, raise the hand. I see that you have all done so, thank you. All those against, raise the hand, and it is referred. Okay, that makes the next item before us F16. Okay. Okay, which is on page 53 of your agenda. For what purpose does the member rise? It has been moved in, it has been moved that we suspend the rules to adjourn CNA die. Is there a second? Hearing none, it is not before us. Okay, so what's before us is F16. When we censure you, we mean it page, made on, found on page 53. I'm recommending a total debate time of this item for this item of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak to it? You, the question is when an amendment would be in order an amendment it is, is in order when you are recognized to speak. You can rise to speak either in favor or against if you wish to make an amendment. And if I recognize you, then you may make an amendment. Does the maker of F F-16 wish to speak to it? May I, may I make a motion to post postpone indefinitely? It would be in order to postpone indefinitely. Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely. Debate time is set automatically at four minutes. This does not come out of the time allotted for the item. Do you wish to speak to postponing indefinitely? No. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Nobody else oh, did you want it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know I don't need to. I know I don't need to, but I should make the case for it, I think. Uh, Kevin Stanley, he, him, next chairperson. While I understand the intent behind it. I don't necessarily disagree. I understand the passion behind it. I don't believe that it is a productive use of this meeting's time to discuss this matter any further at this time. Okay, that is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak against it? Well, yes. The maker of the actual thing can't speak against it. They're not allowed to. Kate Secor, she, her. Mixed chair, right now, our options when somebody commits gross malfeasance is to go, don't do that again. We don't like you. And maybe to hope that people, sorry, and maybe to hope that people hear about it before they vote for the next thing. If we're going to go to all the trouble of looking into someone and investigating and saying, this was a bad thing, it happened, you were responsible, we should put some teeth behind it. Or at least talk about putting some teeth behind it. That was the speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? At the front. <laughs> Linda Robinette, she heard there already is a method. Individuals have been refused entry into world cons. It only lasts a year. This thing would go five years. I think it should be only done on an individual basis. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I'm going to end the brown. Uh, mixed chairperson, Rafe Richards, he, him. The problem with it being to the Worldcons to refuse someone a membership is that, that it's up to the Worldcon. When someone has trespassed against Wusfus, it should be to the business meeting as the representatives of WSFUS to make a decision as to what is the appropriate consequences. That is a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the blue.
A single business meeting should not have the power to- Please state your name. Sorry, thank you. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. A single big business meeting should not have the power to ban someone from the Worldcon for five years. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, in the blue at the front. Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. This isn't about refusing people entry to Worldcon. It's, it's keeping them off committees. That is a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? I'm going to recognize the member in the blue and ask how much time is remaining on each side. We have a minute, 19 seconds remaining for, and a minute, 10 seconds against. Uh, Leslie Turek, she, her. Leslie Turek, she, her. Um, I have been president of Worldcom business meetings that have, someone used earlier the word investigate. Worldcom business meetings don't investigate. I've been at business meetings where someone was censured and then the following day the censure had to be revoked because additional information was learned. So I don't think anything should be based on a censure by the business meeting. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak? I will remind the body that indicating your agreement with the speech is not in order. Is there anyone wishing to speak in f against postponing indefinitely in the middle-ish area? Alana Vincent, she, her. I take the point about that previous incident, but this business meeting chose to impanel an investigative committee which will report to next year's business meeting. That is proper parliamentary procedure on investigation, and it is clearly not the action of a single business meeting. That is a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there an... I don't think you can get a second one until even people wishing to speak against have. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Second time speaking on this, I want to bring up to remind the members of one of the purposes of postpone indefinitely. It is not necessarily to yes or no you're in favor of censuring or not censuring. It is a statement in many ways that you don't think that the business meeting should be discussing this matter. Not that it is sub substantially objectionable enough for an objection to consideration, but enough that you don't want the business meeting to take a position for or against the underlying matter. Postponing this matter indefinitely does not say we like it or we don't like it. It says we don't want to vote on it. Thank you. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against at the front? Cliff Dunn, he, him. I agree with the colleague who spoke right before me about the purpose of postponing indefinitely, and frankly, that's why we should vote it down. Even if you disagree with the underlying motion, I think the business meeting should weigh in on this. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. How are we doing on time? We have 20 seconds remaining, four and 39 against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Or, yep. You wish to speak against? You wish to speak against postponing indefinitely. If the business meeting has the right to censure, it should have the right to determine the punishment for that censure. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? There is not a question. It does not pass. 
it wasn't that close. Um, okay, uh, that was not a two-thirds majority, and the motion to postpone indefinitely does not pass. I had set debate time on this at four minutes. We have had a significant amount of debate about the motion. Is there any objection to reducing further debate time to two minutes? That is not in order at the moment. I'm asking if there is any objection to setting the debate time on the underlying motion to two minutes. Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor of it? Okay, they do not. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, are you moving to suspend the rules and call the question, presumably? Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and call the question. Is there, well, I know there's somebody wishing to speak on this matter, so we will move immediately to a vote. This requires a two-thirds majority and is neither debatable nor amendable, both suspending the rules and calling the question, so we are going to take this up as one vote. So if this vote passes by a two-thirds majority, the question will be called and we will move immediately to a vote on F-16. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And the motion passes and the question has been called and we will move immediately to a vote on F-16. All those in favor of F-16, please raise the hand. All those against? And the motion does not pass and F-16 is defeated. So by my notes, what we have next, what we have left, is F-19 and F-20. So I'm, I'm going to ask the sense of the body. It is 12.02 and our lunch break is at 12.15. Would you all like to just keep going? And Because I believe all that we have left is F-19 and F-20. I think I have heard that there might be some other things coming as well. So given that, given that what we have left is F-19, F-20, and I believe at least one reconsideration of a prior vote, does the body wish to keep going? And if we hit 12.45, we'd go ahead and take our lunch break, because at a certain point I have to give you all lunch. Or do you all wish to just go ahead and take our lunch break? I'd call it early and take it now. I know straw polls aren't in order, but I'm going to do one. All those in favor of um, just keeping going and not taking a lunch break at 12.15, raise the hand. Okay, all those in favor of taking your lunch break now? Okay, I'm not doing a division on this nonsense, y'all. Okay, I'm going to say that given... I, I'm going to put preference to the thing that was printed in the agenda ahead of time that is what members of the body were notified was the schedule. And so we are going to go ahead and take our lunch break now, and we are going to be back in session in 45 minutes at 1249. We are in